Welcome to the Airgun Show. This week we've got the new Daystate Wolverine R on the test bench, but before that I'm heading out on a short rabbiting session that turns out to be surprisingly productive. Right, I'm out rabbiting on some pony paddocks this evening. Now when I first started shooting here there were a heck of a lot of rabbits and they were causing some serious problems. Not just by eating the grass but also by burrowing. Now the problems that that causes is when you've got ponies and horses running around if a hoof goes down a rabbit hole that can result in a broken leg and a very costly vet's bill or even worse. Now we've only got a fairly narrow window of opportunity this evening because the horses are actually coming back out again soon. So let's get cracking. I've already shot a lot of rabbits here but there are still quite a few about and their numbers could quickly spiral now that spring is here. So I'll be putting in some time on this permission over the coming weeks. I know the area I want to target on this session so I'm making my way straight there while staying away from the hedgerow to avoid trampling over the rabbit's burrows and putting them on edge. We're fairly close to some of the estate's houses here so the air rifle is the perfect tool for the job. The spot I've chosen for my ambush doesn't offer a lot of cover so I'm going to lay flat on my belly to keep myself off the skyline. The wind is blowing from the hedgerow towards me, so any sense I'm carrying from the human world should be carried away from the rabbits. Shooting from the prone position may not be the most comfortable option, but it will make me a lot less conspicuous, and also means that I'm able to use a bipod, which should come in very handy if I need to take any longer shots. I'm using ambush tactics today. The main point for that being this is quite a small permission and most of the rabbits are confined to this bramble covered embankment. Now if I were to stalk around, probably just one pass would put them to ground and they'd be very likely to emerge again. And if they did, they'd probably go straight back to ground while I try to stalk back. This way we're keeping back, we'll try to keep as quiet as we can and I'm hoping that once the initial disturbance of our arrival has passed, the rabbits will just venture out and continue to venture out as we pick them off. Now, of course, the great thing about an ambush like this, I can shoot prone and I can shoot from the stability of the bipod. Um, I'm using the FAC rated gun. Now, in all honesty, I'm expecting most shots to come at probably between 30 and 40 meters, but having the extra power and the extra range of the FAC gun does mean that I'll be able to pick off longer shots because I've got the added stability of the bipod and there isn't much of a breeze blowing. Another advantage of the bipod is that it just keeps the gun nice and steady so I'm going to be able to put on the scope cam and hopefully show you the action of the shots as I see them. My scope cam mount is made from the rubber sleeve off a set of flip up lens covers. I've glued a step up ring to the back of it and a corresponding ring around the lens of the camcorder so I can screw the two together. Having to view my crosshairs through a screen rather than directly through the scope is not my preferred option, but I hope the scope cam will take you closer to the action, and using a bipod certainly makes it easier for me. Preparations include a few quick pings of the laser rangefinder. By gauging the distance to landscape features such as trees and fence posts, I can use them as markers when rabbits venture out close to them. This will allow me to estimate the range to my target and then calculate correct holdover or hold under 
without the disturbance of reaching for the rangefinder in the heat of the action. My last job is to complete my concealment. My face is about the only thing that will be on show to my quarry when shooting from this position, and it's easily covered up with a head net. There's quite a lot of noise from cars and trains here, but the rabbits are used to it, and it should give an extra boost to concealment by helping to mask the sounds that we're making. Finally, it's on with my gloves to cover up any flashes of pale skin that might just spook my quarry if they catch a glimpse. And now, as is so often the case, it's all about the waiting game. I've done everything I can to swing the odds in my favour. It's just a matter of the rabbits playing ball and venturing back out to feed. And fortunately, the wait isn't a very long one. There's a rabbit out. It's comfortably within range, oblivious to us, and has settled straight down to feed. Well, a few kicks of the legs there, but that was a very solid headshot and a very clean kill. That rabbit came straight out and started feeding very, very confidently. I actually had to give it a bit of a squeak to make it lift its head up. But it did the trick. That's the first one of the evening in the bag. The first kill of the session always helps to take the pressure off, especially when the cameras are rolling. Now it's back to waiting and watching, in the hope that another chance won't be far away. The tactics work again, and it's not very long before I've got another rabbit in the crosshairs. Another good clean kill there. Again, a few twitches of the legs, but that's really typical with headshot rabbits though. That one was only about half grown, but you can't discriminate when you're controlling pests like this around pony paddocks. Small rabbits quickly grow into big rabbits that cause all sorts of problems. You have to be patient with this sort of shooting. You also have to put up with a bit of discomfort, but it can really pay off. Well, that was a bigger one. It was only about 25 metres, so a bit closer than the others, so I had to give the shot just a touch of hold under. Also, it was down in a bit of a dip, so I couldn't see all of the rabbit, but I could get a nice clear bead on its head and deliver another really solid headshot and a good clean kill, which is what we're after. I load my old Daystate Mark IV by hand as I find it a little more accurate in single shot mode. It also enables me to mount the scope nice and low without having to worry about it fouling the magazine. That was another full grown one, peeping up over that same brow. Now again, it's about 25 metres which is 
closer than my zero range, so the shot just required just a tiny amount of hold under to ensure that really solid smack to the skull. This session is going really well. After a bit of a wait, there's another rabbit out and I'm back in action again. That was the classic cartwheel of a headshot rabbit. You know the pellets find its mark when they do that and it really is lights out. Now, Again, that one was only half grown, but as I explained earlier, you really don't discriminate with this kind of pest control. Another good thing is that the smaller rabbits are actually incredibly tender, so they're delicious pan fried. Right, well we've run out of time. We need to get out of the field before the horses are let back out. And I have to say that after two hours of being sprawled out like this, I'm starting to feel pretty uncomfortable and I'm looking forward to moving around and stretching my legs again. For a short session, I'm pleased with how it's gone. We've had five rabbits, so that's obviously gonna help to slow down the problems they're causing with the burrowing here. Uh, and with eating the grass, obviously I'm going to need to come back for more sessions because if I've shot five in a short session like this, there are going to be plenty more around. Um, apart from it being beneficial for pest control, those rabbits are also all going to end up on my table, so it's been very good from that point of view too. Another great thing about this approach is that, with no hide or decoys to clear away, it's a very quick pack up at the end of the session. That's a few less rabbits on that permission, but I'll be heading back again for more soon. Now, it's the Air Gun Show News. This is the Air Gun Show News. India cleaned up in the Air Gun events at the Commonwealth Games. Two of the four golds and seven of the 12 total medals on offer went to Indian athletes, with Australia and Singapore grabbing the two other golds. But there were strong performances from British rifle and pistol athletes in general. Shona McIntosh took home bronze in both the prone and three position rifle, as well as making the air rifle final. Dean Bale also grabbed a bronze in 3P, while in men's prone rifle, all three podium positions went to home nations athletes, thanks to David Phelps, Neil Sturton, and Ken Parr. And staying with Commonwealth shooting, there's a way it might take place in 2022 after all. Birmingham won't include shooting when it hosts the Games in four years' time, but shooting organisations are considering plans to put on an international event at Bisley at the same time. This wouldn't have Commonwealth recognition, but some MPs have already voiced their support for the event. Sports Minister Tracy Crouch said, If there were a bid, we would pay attention to it. Firearm certificates could now last eight weeks longer. New laws come into effect that mean that if you put in a renewal application in good time, 
and the police fail to process it before your expiry date, you'll automatically get an eight-week extension on your licence. This means you're less likely to have to lodge your FAC air guns with an RFD or a mate while police forces suffer from delays. The new law applies throughout England and Wales. And finally, there's a new issue of Egg and Shooter on sale. In this technique heavy issue, there's a comprehensive guide to making your air guns last longer with DIY and maintenance. There's an in-depth look at getting the most from Springers, and Matt Manning shows you how Magpie decoys can deliver results in the field. Plus, there's a group test of junior rifles, a review of Diana's Mauser-style AM03, and the chance to win a 10-shot Gamo Maxim Elite. Get Ag and Shooter and Good News Agents, or subscribe now at myfavouritemagazines.co.uk. That was the Egg and Shane News. Top-end air guns don't come cheap, but if you've got the money to spend, they can take your shooting to the next level. That's certainly the case with this week's test gun, the Daystate Wolverine R. This is the highlight version in Turkish walnut stock, and it retails for a cool £1,449. There's more to air gun design than aesthetics, but this gun is a real looker. It also looks quite big, but don't be fooled by its chunky appearance. It only measures around 98 centimetres from end to end without a silencer fitted, and that carbon fibre bottle keeps weight down to around three and a half kilos. And thanks to its stock design, this gun feels great in the shoulder. This is the walnut stock, and a laminate version is also available. It's ambidextrous and the butt plate is adjustable for height and angle. That means you can get the height just right to suit whatever height scope mates you opt for. And that angle adjustment means you can put a bit of cast into the stock to make it feel more like a dedicated right or left hander. This is a stock that has obviously been designed for scope use and consequently the cheek piece is already nice and high. The forend also has a good sweep to it, so you don't find yourself grabbing at the bottle. And, although they could maybe do with being a little further forward, the stippled grooves on either side provide added grip. The pistol grip features the same smart stippling on either side, and it's sculpted for a very comfortable fit in the hand. Behind it is a large thumb hole cutaway, and there are also perfectly positioned thumb shelves for those of us who like to shoot thumb up. Just as I'd expect with an air gun at this price point, engineering and finish look immaculate. All of the components marry together almost seamlessly, and the matte black anodized finish of the metalwork not only looks good, but also provides a high level of protection against the elements. On the subject of engineering, this gun features a side lever cocking and loading action, which I really like. The rear stroke of the lever cocks the action and indexes the magazine, and the forward stroke pushes the pellet home with silky smooth precision. The lever can be switched from right to left, but not by you or me. It needs to go to a Daystate dealer or back to the factory. The magazine at the heart of the system looks a lot like the one on my old Mark III, but it has evolved a lot over the years. It slides in and out from the side and is held securely in place by a magnet. In use, it doesn't miss a beat and delivers the same degree of accuracy as the supplied single shot tray. The magazine does stand proud of the scope rails though, and that's something you do need to be aware of when choosing scope mounts to match with this gun. The R in this Wolverine's name stands for regulator, and this gun features a reg made by Dutch giant's humour. The main external giveaway is the second pressure gauge on the right, which shows regulator pressure and helps with the diagnosis of any problems. That regulator also provides remarkable shot-to-shot -shot consistency. 
with a spread of little more than five feet per second during my testing. Combined with the highlight bottle, it also provides a massive shot count. Around 500 shots from a 230 bar fill at sub 12 foot pounds and around 140 shots if you go for the 30 foot pound 2-2 version. And when you do eventually run out of air, refilling is fast and easy thanks to the supplied quick fill adapter. The Wolverine R's shot to shot consistency would count for very little without a decent trigger and I'm pleased to say it has a brilliant one. It's a two stage mechanical unit and this one was just about perfect straight from the box. The length and weight of the first stage feels just right, then there's a distinct stop before the second stage breaks crisply and without any hint of creep. The match trigger also offers a heck of a lot of adjustment should you want to fettle it. Easy to access adjustment screws enable you to tweak length and weight of the first stage and second stage weight. There's also adjustment for the position of the trigger post and height and angle of the shoe. The Wolverine Eye safety catch is conveniently positioned at the rear of the action. It looks very neat and is very positive in use. You thumb it to the left to make the gun safe, then nudge it across to the right when you're ready to shoot. So that's an overview of the main features of the new Daystate Wolverine R. Let's let it loose on the range and I'll show you what it can do. Well, that's the sort of accuracy I've come to expect over the test period. The 177 calibre test gun has just turned out a 30 metre group that must measure within 10 millimetres from centre to centre. That very crisp trigger, the brilliant shot to shot consistency and a very precise Lother Walther barrel combine to make accurate shooting not just simple but also very enjoyable. There's no denying that the Wolverine R can cut it on targets, but I also think this would be a brilliant piece of kit for hunting. And that's why I fitted this one with the Daystate Airstream 6 Reflex Silencer. The chunky barrel shroud goes some way towards hushing down the muzzle blast, but the addition of that silencer mutes it down to a very stealthy whisper. The Wolverine R is available in steel bottle and cylinder options. And if you want high power, there's an 18 foot pound 177, a 30 foot pound 22, and a 35 foot pound 0.25. Plus, there's Daystate's mighty 0.303, which churns out around 60 foot pounds with this gun. And because of that high capacity bottle and the humor regulator, all churn out a very healthy number of shots per fill. The Daystate Wolverine R is a seriously impressive piece of kit. The trigger is excellent and the addition of that regulator and side lever action combine to make it something really special. Of course it is going to be beyond the budget of a lot of air gun shooters, but I think that anybody who can afford to splash out on it will find that it is worth the investment. And it comes with the reassurance of a three year warranty. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership. Yeah.